What's up guys, it's Albert in Muffin Group. I'm back again after a long absence. The reason for this was a lot of work related to the update which I would like to present in this video. Today, I'm really excited to show you all these great features and tell you a bit about newest update, version 27.3. We've added a lot of new options that you've been asking a lot about lately. I hope you're gonna like what I want to present you in a moment. The update comes with some really handy features, so let's not waste any more time and head over to my screen to discuss them closer. Conditional logic. Let me introduce you the biggest feature we've been recently working on, conditional logic. This option allows you to display or not to display different elements depending on the condition you set. I will show you with an example how it works. Let's say I have a page, and on this page I have a block of text, which I want to display for logged in users. Nothing simpler. All I have to do is edit that block page and under advanced tab, there is a new sub tab now, conditional logic. All I have to do is click add conditions, so the pop-up can appear. Now let's add our condition. As I want to display this text block to logged in users, let's choose login status as logged in, and that's it. We can close the pop-up now, and as you can see on the left, you have this condition set. Let's update the page now. Brilliant! From now on, this block of text will be visible for logged-in users only. You can easily combine different conditions with AND or OR. It is basically up to you and your needs. We have plenty of conditions right now, but as I know you, we're gonna add more at your request soon. The time will show what other conditions might be useful. Let me show you another usage of conditional logic that might be useful for you as well. Let's say I have a login icon in header where users might log in. However, when they are logged in, I would like to display different icon and user's username. To do this, for login icon, I have to go to the advanced conditional logic of that icon. I have to set the following rule. If login status is non-locked, this rule says that login icon will appear only for those who didn't log yet. However, for the other icon in the same advanced conditional logic, I have to set if login status is logged in, so it appears only when users is logged in. What else I would like to display here are two things, user's featured image and username. For that, let's move to the settings and for the image, let's set user avatar, but for description, username. Whenever you set any conditional logic for element, wrap or section, for better visibility, they are bordered with by a yellow dashed line with this characteristic double arrow icon. Let's switch to the front end now. As you can see, as I'm logged in, I see my avatar and name. Now, let's open private window and put the link to my staging site to see how it looks like when I am non-logged. As you can see, only login icon is visible, so when you click on it, you have standard login form. Hope this feature would be clear and thanks to this short explanation, you would be able to use it in your current and future projects. If you think that this feature should be discussed in detail, just let me know in the comment section down there below. Title tag. We all know how important SEO is nowadays. For this reason, we have added title tag for most elements. Let's say you use, for example, icon box element and you set the title. From now on, under the title, you have tag option, so you can choose between different h1, h2, h3, 4, 5, div, paragraphs and spam. It is very important to maintain the appropriate order of tags on the website if we want the correct tag hierarchy in terms of SEO. Re-rendering builder data. Under Bifim tools, we have added re-render builder data feature. This won't be used by many of you, but for some might be a real lifesaver. If for some reason Bibler won't load, for example you put weird code in the Bibler that you've copied from somewhere in internet, you have to re-render builder data fields to fix it. It's just a click. Styling caption for image. Another option we have added for image is styling captions. If you use captions for images and you're bored with default look under style tab, you will find caption sub tab. But remember, it's available only if you use captions. If you don't, this sub tab won't be available. 
From now on, you can do things like set alignment, choose color, background, paddings, margins, and much more. Dynamic data. Add to cart for button in query loops. From now on, whenever you are building products list or slider with query loops, you can put the add to cart button into query loop. What's more, this button can have three states depending on the settings for a particular product. If product doesn't have any options, you will see add to cart as first button on my screen, so product can be added directly to the cart from the list. If button have additional options, you will see select options on the button, so after a click, you will be redirected to the product page to select its options. Third state is your custom button title, which in my case is go to Amazon. Button title and link for that button can be set for each product individually under general tab when product is set as affiliate product. To set buttons like in my case, for title field, you have to set title, add to cart, dynamic data, but for link, permalink, add to cart. Only then you can have all true states available for add to cart button in query loops. Line clamp for heading element. For heading element, we have added line clamp option, which is under style tab. Within this option, you can limit the lines to the value you like. Let's say I have heading where my title is in two lines, but I want it to be in one line only for some reason. In such case, all I have to do is set option to one and heading will be shortened to one line only. And at the end of that line, you will see three dots, informing that heading is longer than what you actually see. Encode for bots. Full heading text will be available. Configurable color picker palette. Since version 27.3, you can configure your own colors for color picker palette. This can be done under theme options, colors, palettes. You can set up to 14 colors. As soon as you will do it, you will see all these predefined colors and color palette picket for any field that supports color picker. Thanks to this option, you will be able to color what you care about the most much faster without having to look for the right color every time. Classic mobile navigation. For those of you who like classic menus on mobile, we've added new option that lets you display drop-down menu on mobile navigation icon click. If for some reason you don't like sidebar menus on mobile, that would be perfect choice. To activate classic menu on mobile, all you have to do is add menu burger icon and under settings, you have to choose classic menu navigation type. Of course, just like for other navigation types, you have also choose menu to display from the list. It's that simple. From now on, whenever I click on menu burger icon in front end, the classic drop-down menu will appear. My classic mobile menu is kind of dark, but its styling depends on your needs, as you can style it the way you like with built-in options. Share item. With new update, we have also added another element into B Builder, share. It's just drag and drop to put share element anywhere you like. This element contains copy link, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn icons. What's more, each icon can be disabled separately if you don't need it. Of course, just like any other element, this one also has style and advanced tabs, where you can add nice touch to this element by styling it as you like. More options for sale batch customization. These additional options have been added for already existing option located under Shop, General, Badges. From now on, Sale Badge Style, which has two states, Label and Person, have extra fields. Whenever you set Label, you have extra field where you can set custom text, Sale Badge. But when you enable Person, you can set custom text before and after Person value. Let's say, right now I have only percentage value in Badge, but I wanted to say minus 15% sale. In such case, all I have to do is type sale and after person's value field, and that's it. From now on, I'll have customized sale badge style. Contact Form 7 element. For those who like to use Contact Form 7 plugin, we've added new element into B Builder. From now on, you don't have to use shortcuts any longer. 
Whenever you have forms created with that plugin, you can add contact form 7 element anywhere you like and under settings, you can select write form from the list. Nice touch to speed up work by not looking for right shortcut. Spacer element. It's another new element we've added into the Baby Builder. It might be very useful, especially for those who need to add spacing between elements but don't want to use divider due to too many options. It's a very simple element that have only height setting. You can easily define the unit of measurement and set its height. It's that simple. No useless options for even faster workflow. New elements for Shop Archive template. With this update, upon your request, we have added additional elements into BeBuilder for Shop Archive templates. From now on, whenever you create WooCommerce category template, you can use three types of description available for each category. Whenever you create or modify already existing category, each has three fields. Description, you can put here description for specific category. Top content, where you can put any content that would display above category. And bottom content, where you can also put additional content that would be displayed below category. While description has to be put as element into Shop Archive template, other two can be enabled by default under template options. They would appear above and under the template or you can hide them in template options and use this element in the BB layer to display them in any place you like. I am pretty sure these additional elements would be great for SEO purposes on your WooCommerce stores. Equal heights for shop products. This feature is something that many of you have been asking about lately. It's very simple to use, so let me show you how it works. As you can see on my screen, I have shop page where I put shop products element. As you noticed, product boxes are of unequal heights because the product names and their descriptions are of different lengths. If you want the height of the boxes to be the same, nothing simpler, just edit the element and then go to products list standardization option. It has two states. By default, products are unequal height. To make them say high, switch to equal heights. As you can see, all products are equal high. What's more, when enabling this option, you can choose alignment, the bottom from specific element. By default, it's aligned to price, but let's switch to the button and now prices will go up and boxes will be aligned to the button. Here, you can choose alignment between image, title, price, variations, description and button. Hope you're gonna like this option as I noticed that many of you really needed this option for online stores. We wanted to make it as simple as possible and I hope we succeed. Mouse scrubbing. With new version of Bifim, we have also improved mouse scrubbing for inputs, where it's allowed. It's for all those who don't like mouse scrubbing and prefer to put values directly from keyboard. From now on, you can put values from keyboard but when you click on a field and hold left mouse button for half a second, mouse scrubbing is being activated, so you can scrub mouse to set desired value. This way, setting up values for fields would work perfectly for both, those who like mouse scrubbing and don't. Banner box. The last thing that is worth to mention is banner box element. It's a great element that can be used for any site or store. If we look closer on that element in the Bibler, you will see that it has many options like style, vertical and horizontal position, image, overlay, hover effect, and many more. This element gives you extreme freedom when creating by mixing and matching the available options. Let's view this page in front end to see what type of banner boxes I built for the purposes of this tutorial. If you hover over any of these three boxes, you see how visible content moves up, but also additional image appears on Hoover. Let's now jump onto another page where we've prepared some examples of the element usage. I will now hover over these elements to show you how diverse the uses can be. As you can see, this element is truly unique and will allow you unlimited creativity. That's it for this update and the major changes that came with it. I hope 
that we managed to fulfill the wishes of at least some of you. Apart from the major changes I mentioned in this video, there are also a few smaller things and improvements that I hope you will notice in your daily work. If you want to know more about this update, just check our changelog in the description. And as always, thanks for watching and remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time you release a new video. And if you have more questions, please visit our support center at support.muffingroup.com.